who's become a, for many of us a hero, an icon of this struggle. Um, we are very happy to have you. We'd love to hear your stories as well. Thank you very much. Salam Sejantra and Salam Bersi. Uh, salam Bersi. Um, Pak Samad is my hero. Okay. I mean, I say that again. I said that last night, uh, uh, and I'm going to say that again. And so is Auntie Betty. Auntie Bersi. Sorry, Auntie Bersi. Um, another hero of mine. Now, I, I'm going to start first, actually, by saying how proud I am of uh, the team, uh, Nat and his team. Uh, um, am I allowed to ask them to stand up? And um, can they show themselves a wave? If they like to. How Some proud I am of all of you who have put this book together. This wonderful book together. Thank you very much. I thank you on behalf of Bursay too. Now, my Bursay story is not in the book. I, only because I have not written it yet. But if I were to write it, uh, it would have many chapters. It wouldn't be just one story, it would have many chapters. The first chapter would be entitled pre Berse 2.0. And I would tell the story of Berse 1 and the brave people who brought the issue of electoral reform for the first time to the fore. And I applaud them. I would also talk about the birth and launch of Berse 2.0 and how it became completely a civil society movement. Now, I will also say how we tried the avenue of discourse, discussion, <coughs> several memoranda being handed in. We tried all that. And I remember how difficult it was to get people, the rakyat, interested in the issue of electoral reform. Electoral reform is a boring subject, there's no doubt about that. So we had great difficulty getting support. I don't think people even know the work we were doing before the 9th of July, but there was work that had been going on for more than a year. Chapter two, in chapter two, the title would be, my chapter two title would be, Why Berse 2.0? And I would then talk about the Sarawak elections, one of the dirtiest elections we have ever had. And I will also talk about how EC, the Election Commission, continued to live in denial, as they still do, by the way, um, uh, in relation to our demands. They would hear us out. They were very nice, don't get me wrong. The discussions were all very cordial and civil, but nothing happened after that. And we wanted to see what happened in the Sarawak elections to see whether it was in fact necessary to have a rally. And I think it became absolutely clear to us that a rally was necessary. If we were to ensure that what happened in Sarawak does not happen in the 13th general elections. My chapter three would be about global Bursi. And I think we should applaud global Bursi. Come on. Yeah, they were amazing. What? And you know, we didn't organize it. Let me tell you, everyone said, asked us, how did you organize Global Bursay? We didn't organize Global Bursay. They organized themselves. They wrote to us and said, how can we help? And in fact, on that day, they, uh, there were 32, on the 9th of July, 32, uh, in 32 other cities, uh, there, were, there were also demonstrations. I think you all know that. And I think that's... When, when Chinwa talked about uh, unity, I think the unity is worldwide. That was what was so amazing about Versailles 2.0. So I would dedicate an entire chapter to Global Versailles. My chapter four would be about, and I would entitle it, The Ugly Side. And there I would talk about the threats by the government to put all of us under the ISA and it was coming out on a daily basis. Maybe the ISA, we might use something else and so on, but intimidating on a daily basis. 
uh, not only uh, did we have that, there were allegations, we were, hold on, what was it? Communists, Jews, what else? Uh, Hindu extremists, Islam, really? Islam? I'm not so sure about that. Whatever. Anti-Islam, yes, anti-Islam, don't forget that. Anti-Islam, everything, everything they could throw at us, they threw at us, on a daily basis. And I think uh, uh, a survey was done recently where Utusan, Malaysia came out as having the greatest amount of number of articles on Bursi. Uh, maybe we should send a thank you note. Huh? Yeah, because that really helped with the publicity. Now, then we, uh, we had, of course, the personal attacks on all of us, the uh, Bursi uh, steering committee and so on. We had ministers, ministers coming out on a daily basis going on and on and on about Bursay 2.0. Now, there are many more things that happen. Uh, I don't have to remind you. So that chapter of mine will be called, if I, if I ever wrote this book, by the way, uh, The Ugly Side, because I think we saw so much of that. We saw much too much of that. But in a way, that's what then made the Bursay 2.0 experience, uh, 709, so different. Now, I would, my chapter five would be about the week, the run-up to uh, uh, 709. And I would talk, of course, about the offer for a stadium. I would talk about the meeting with um, the young Diputuan Agong. I would talk about the stadium fiasco. Uh, and I would talk about all our meetings with the police. And um, really, uh, and how we all, I remember per se 2.0 members, we all gathered uh, in a hotel, and I remember, so don't laugh, okay, don't laugh at this. I, re I, I, I made my way to that hotel the night before on the back of a motorbike. I've never been on a motorbike. <laughs> and maybe that was my paranoia, but I couldn't risk not being allowed in. Uh, so I took all measures to ensure I, was, I made it there. Um, so because my car, my car was recognized, I was followed as well, by the way, I mean, the things that well, they, they, they put you through when they, they really want to try and stop you doing something. It's unbelievable. So that was, that would be the run up right up to 709. And then my chapter 6, uh, if I could engrave it in gold, it would be in gold. And that would be just entitled 709. And of course, a lot of that is really your stories. The stories that are, that are here. I don't even know if I need to write a chapter except for my own experience. Uh, my own experience, of course, um, first time with tear gas, totally unprepared, actually, uh, very silly. I knew about the wet towel and the salt, I forgot the salt. I knew about the wet towel, but that was in a, in a bag, inside my handbag, so I could, couldn't get to it at all when the, when the, when the, fire, the tear gas was fired at us. And, uh, you know, that's... Uh, that was my experience. It was uh, it was horrendous. It was awful. I, I really thought I was not going to make it out of that tunnel, and I was dragged to safety. Um, and then I was arrested. Now, after I was arrested, I headed off to uh, I think it was opposite Pudu Jail. Uh, yeah, I was taken there. I was in a room by myself. I was isolated, which concerned me a little bit because I thought they were going to treat me differently from the others, i.e., the EO or something. But nevertheless, I was treated very well. Um, and I was panicking, actually, about you. Uh, uh, some, I was panicking about you, and I was panicking about Kitsiam because of his eye. Uh, you know, he has, he was wearing some. He had just had an operation, so I was wondering what happened to them, and did they get anywhere, and uh, what was happening. And of course, I didn't have to worry because I was allowed to uh, go on my Twitter, and I read Pat was in the pal at the palace, and I said, how did he make it to the palace? <laughs> barefoot, you know, and there I was worried about what happened to him. Well, he didn't stop, and that's why he's my hero, you know. Uh, he never stopped, yes? They liked, they liked you, yes, <laughs> definitely. Well, who couldn't like you? <laughs> so that was very interesting for me. So that was my personal experience, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, that day, uh, what I, I would say more, I mean, I would say more than the stories that we have here. Of course, I would start by saying, how sad it was that we lost uh, our supporter that day. That was wholly avoidable and wholly unnecessary, and I will regret that forever. And I think we all will, and we all feel the same way. Now, 
I would also say how sorry I was that people were hurt because there were people who were badly hand who were roughly handled by the police. Uh, I would also say I was very sorry about the EO6 who, who took uh, the brunt of it on behalf of Per Se 2.0 and I actually thanked them because I thought they took uh, the, the heat on behalf of Per Se 2.0. And, uh, and it was very tough for them because they were just in there and they didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, it, till today, we don't know why they were under the EO. Uh, and then we don't know why they're continuing to be charged. Uh, we can't understand it. What's the problem? Or is it someone's problem? <laughs> and I think we need to find out who's making these decisions. I, I really want to know who made the decision. decision to detain the EO6, and who made the decision, who precisely made the decision to keep them there and to carry uh, and, and to continue keeping them there till after the uh, Percy rally, because it is a nonsensical, baseless decision. And I think we need to know who made that decision. So I still have a problem with the EO6, and I still have with the way they treated the EO6, and I have a great problem in the fact that they continue to harass them. And I think we need to keep an eye on this and ensure that they, they are stopped in their tracks when they try to do that the next time. Certainly after the Prime Minister's speech uh, um, on the 15th, I would imagine that we ought to see a, a new era, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, certainly on that day, something truly wonderful happened. I think Malaysians overcame fear. Chinwan put it very well. We overcame all odds uh, and um, we came together as one. And it is something the government has been trying to do for the longest time and I don't think it succeeded. But I think we succeeded. We, we have to show the way sometimes that people just have to take over and get on with it. Because, you know, we, we're sick of slogans and, and uh, taglines and so on. We're not interested in that. We're interested in really moving together. Now, chapter seven, would be, of course, I would also write about the police brutality because I think that is something that needs to be said again and again. But having said that, I would also write about some of the policemen who were very good to the people, who behaved very professionally, who allowed them to come in and leave peacefully because they show, they have now demonstrated that uh, assemblies can be peacefully conducted and the police can play a meaningful role to make sure that happens. Now, as I say, chapter seven would be post 709. And of course the drama continues, continued and continues. We thought everybody would keep quiet and get on with life, no such thing. They kept going on and on, justifying their actions, saying how well uh, they thought we had been treated and this is by the food that they gave us. Uh, and uh, I think there was a huge banquet. I, I didn't get the banquet, by the way. I was somewhere else, but there was a huge banquet, etc., etc. Without thinking for a minute that when we talk about police brutality, we're talking about the way the people were treated when they walked peacefully, not the way they are treated after they are arrested. Not that that's not important, it is. But really, what was the necessity to treat the people, the right yard, the way that you did when they were peaceful? As far as I know, not a single flower pot was broken, and that is really credit to the Raya who were out that day. Now, I would also, of course, Tung Shin is another example. There's so many, I don't have to go into all that. Those are things that they kept going on about, the lies that came after that. Um, I mean, goodness, look at this picture. Look at the picture on the front page. Does that look like 6,000 people to you? Uh, and that's only in one place. So. Why? You know, why did they spin this? And, and I can't understand it. Now, then we, then of course, the, the next chapter would be, for me, uh, entitled The Rakyat Takeover. Because after 709, there was an awakening. There was an awareness, and uh, we now see civil society initiatives. We see Undi Malaysia, Undi La, the Undi La video, which everyone must watch. We see Generation 709, Voice for Choice. We see people registering. We see the right yet on a daily basis coming out in Malaysia Kinney, giving, uh, giving their views as to uh, what was wrong with the electoral role. So the right yet is really watching 
Now, for the first time, the Raya is truly interested in the elections in this country, and that is quite amazing. And for me now, this chapter and many other chapters after this will not be written by me. It is being written and will continue to be written by the Raya of Malaysia. And with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I say Bursay 2.0 is more than just a word. It is really something we all feel, that's why you're all here. Uh, and we feel it in our hearts, we feel it in our heads. And that's why it is impossible for anyone to fight it. And they shouldn't fight it. They shouldn't fight it. You can't fight a feeling. You can't fight something I'm thinking. That's why we are such a formidable force for peace. The right yet are a formidable force when we unite in a cause like this. Now, I finally say this, sorry about the time, finally say just this, you know, there are a lot of good people still, and I keep repeating this, there are still good people, there are good people in, in the police, there are good people in government, there are good people even in the election commission and all the bodies that we say, uh, uh, MACC, etc., etc. there are good people there. And I would appeal to those good people to stand up and be counted now. Now is the time for them to stand up and speak if they feel what is happening is not right. And I would appeal to them to stand with the right yet and fight for what is great and for what is right for Malaysia. Thank you. We heard a lot of stories about, yeah, and I think there's one in the book about the tunnel in which, you know, TAS was fired on both sides. I think both uh, Biga and Pasama experienced that. Um, I think there was one tweet that said, uh, we were worried about Pasama, but it turned out he was the Gandalf of the group. Now shall not pass. Uh, and I remember, I think people are saying the police were scared to approach him, like, basically. <laughs> um, yes, we, we do have, um, uh, so now we come to the session where, where we'd like to hear um, your stories, um, where you were that day, what you experienced, what you felt, um, and how you've changed, how you've seen other people change. Um, maybe to start us off, I, I think another another great icon of this of this movement is probably going to be surprised, but uh, maybe if Auntie Percy could help share some of her experiences with you. I think the people should speak first. Everyone that You are the people, <laughs> What? Can I have a show of hands of all those that ran that day? Please, you were there. Salute! <laughs> Your story. Your story. You first, Auntie, then you'll go. Help inspire oh. them. Either you can uh, uh, inspire them the same way you inspired us. That's <laughs> right. I. It was an ordinary walk for me. I was not aware of all the persuade points that it, I said, right? One week, ten days before the rally, I went for a dinner with a friend and she told me about Dato Abiga. Now, I never, I didn't realize, I thought it was a man. <laughs> <laughs> ten days before the rally. And then we both decided, okay, let's wear yellow, starting Sunday, and we go to church. <coughs> right? So I went to Chowkin and bought five t-shirts for $19, five yellow t-shirts, um, used t-shirts. Then a week, the Sunday before I, or two Sundays before I saw that in our Herald, the Catholic paper, do not walk away from democracy and... I printed up 300 copies. Uh, so for the whole week, I went around passing on this at the coffee shops around my area, Setapak. You know the response, some people were just, some people are just happy to see uh, some spirit like uh, a macho, one who, wants, who, who knows. And I was glad for those faces, the few that I met at the coffee shops. But. My Catholic friends, they really put me down through the week. 
I go to church, and they say that Jesus do it. I was so down. Then during the week on the Tuesday, I rang somebody up, come, let's go for the rally. She told me, Anne, don't do this kind of things. Let the others do it. Don't do anything like that. Don't disturb anything. I was down again. Down means I'm not able to do anything good, right, for some moments, for some hours. But then I get up again. Right? I get up again, I go out again. The next coffee shop, the next person. In the bus, anywhere. That's about it. I built up my space. But on the morning of, September, of, of Saturday, it was like, Am I going to wear yellow in? Or do I wrap up my yellow t-shirt? That day I came back again. Now if I wrap up my yellow t-shirt, where am I going to change? So I might as well wait. That's about it. Nothing else. Next person please.